Hello and welcome to another Design Clips here at W Plus 9. This is Dawn Wolfslegel and today I wanted to give you a closer look at two of our new stamp sets, the Modern Peonies and the Modern Anemones. Now these are the newest additions to our Modern Florals and that just simply refers to the clean illustration style of these sets, which makes them perfect for several mediums, including watercolor, Copics, colored pencils, and so on. So today's tutorial is a little more advanced, so if it's outside of your comfort zone, I will have cards to several videos throughout the tutorial that have a much uh, simpler or beginner level watercolor. But if you're ready to explore and just kind of stretch yourself, then this is going to be a great video for you guys. So this is the Modern Peonies and the Modern Anemones. Today we're going to be focusing more on the anemones, and I'm going to show you how I watercolor in this style. And I'm going to show you in two colors. So this is an example on hot press paper. We're going to be using the leaves from the peonies. But I also wanted to just give you a quick look at um, doing this particular stamp set on cold press watercolor paper. You're going to get a little bit different look. Here I combined the sets and I even used the leaves from our modern petunias, which was previously released, but also works great with these sets. So here you can see on the cold press, you get a lot more texture. It's a little harder to control. And here's the same setup on the hot press. The details are a little more crisp and clean because there's less texture on the paper. And that's what we're going to focus on today. I'm going to be using the Fabriano Artistico hot pressed uh, watercolor paper. Sorry. Slip my mind there for a second. I had to read it. <laughs> but you can see here how you can retain a lot more detail because we're using less water on this paper. It holds less than the cold press. So let's go ahead and get started. I've already loaded a palette here and I've got some cobalt violet, ultramarine blue, sap green, quinacridone gold, quinacridone magenta, a permanent rose, cadmium red deep, and a little bit of alizarin crimson here as well. These colors aren't important, but if you want to follow along and do exactly what I'm doing, that's what I'm using. I've also got my favorite, a number five round brush here. And then off to the side, I've got a couple of others just in case I need them, a liner brush, a number two, a number four round, and I will also have a number zero round just for that detail to get into those little nooks and crannies if I need it. I'm stamping all of these in Distress Ink Antique Linen. And I've got my paper towel and my clean water off to the side. Now this palette has been loaded for a while, so the paints are dry. And I have a lot of people ask me, you know, what do you do with your paint when you're done with it? And the answer is simple. I leave it in my palette. <laughs> Watercolors are simple to reactivate. I just spritz them with a little bit of water and let that sit and kind of um, reconstitute the paint while I do my stamping or my sketching or whatever it may be. There is no need to clean out your palette after every time unless your paints get moldy. If you leave your palette open and let those paints completely dry, then you're good to go. Just re-wet them when you're ready to use them again. For the sake of time, I've pre-stamped several of the images from the set, and now we can go straight into watercoloring. First thing I want to do is prep some of that quinacridone magenta. So I'm pulling some of it into an empty well and then diluting it with water. I don't want to go in, in with anything too strong just yet. I want to start off soft. And one way to do that is to use the wet into wet technique. And that's exactly what it sounds like. I'm going to pre-wet an area and then I'm going to add pigment to it. I'm going to start by adding the pigment in the places where I want the color to be darkest. And then that water that's on the paper is going to move that pigment across the paper. Water is the vehicle that moves the pigment. So if I were to lay this down onto dry paper, that paint would not go anywhere. It would stay exactly where I put it. But by putting the water on the paper first, that water is going to carry that pigment. So you'll notice that I put paint at the tip of the petal and then paint at the base of the petal. And then I'm letting the water merge those two areas. You'll notice that my pigment is not spreading super fast. And that's because I'm not using a ton of water. I'm just using enough water to create a sheen. And if you hold it in the light, you'll be able to see that it's shiny that means that you've got enough water. If your pigment is spreading too fast or too far, it means that you're using too much water. Um, there are times that you'll want to do that, but again, if it's spreading faster or farther than you want it to, use less water. For this style, I'm going to jump around the flower, making sure not to work on any two petals that are touching or side by side if they're still wet. I'm working under studio lights and I'm using very little water, so my petals are drying really quickly. But that's something to bear in mind if you're working on your own pieces at home. If you don't want two areas of color to bleed into each other, 
then make sure that the previously painted area is dry before you come in and paint the area next to it. There are times when this is optimal, and if it happens when you don't want it to, it's not the end of the world, you can always use a paper towel to soak up some of the color, then let both areas dry completely, and then you can come in and lay color on top of it. I'm gonna be doing a lot of layering or glazing, so my first wash is always really, really light. I'm using a mixture of paint that is very diluted, so very little pigment, lots of water. Watercolor paints are extremely concentrated. A little goes a long way. It's gonna go much further than you think it will. So I always start off lighter, and then I can build color by adding more layers if I need to deepen an area. It's always easier to add color than it is to remove. There are times that you'll start off with a stronger concentration, maybe you want to go deeper, but again for this, this look, this style, I tend to start off lighter and then build my color. In a couple of areas I will add strong pigment, like here. I'm controlling this though. Um, I, I picked up the tiniest bit of strong pigment and I just dropped it in at the very edge and at the very bottom. I'm making sure that I give it plenty of water to follow as well. This can quickly get away from you though, so you want to use it sparingly. But it's a great way to add a little extra pop of color, uh, especially if you're going for a little bit of contrast. So now I've loaded my other brush with some quinacridone gold, and I will intermittent, intermittent, intermittent I can't talk. <laughs> I am switching back and forth, there you go, between the two brushes. So I'm gonna lay down a little bit of the uh, magenta and then I will use the other brush to drop in a little bit of the gold and then I'll blend them together with water. And this will just break up that color and add a little bit of warmth to this flower. You'll notice I'm switching back and forth. And then sometimes I'll take clean water and soften out some of those edges. And it's hard to tell because I have this in fast motion, but I'm letting each layer dry before I add another layer of color. Um, if I don't let them dry in between, they don't build upon each other, they'll mix instead of building, and it's a completely different look, and sometimes it can be quite disastrous. So just make sure you let each of your layers dry in between. I'm gonna let the pink flower completely dry before we do the center, so while that's drying, I'm gonna move on to the white flower. And I have another video on painting the white flowers that I'll link here, but for this one we're just going to go with a very simple generic white flower. Uh, they're not completely white, they usually have hints of color whether it be blue, green, yellow. This one we're going to go with shades, very cool shades of blues, purples, and um, I think I add in a little bit of pinks. But we're painting the shadows. We're not painting uh, the entire petal. We're just painting areas that would be in shadow. And we're going extremely light. Very, very, very light washes of color. And while that dries, we can start on the center of the other flowers. So we're going to go ahead and pre-wet the area. We're going to pick up a almost glowing purple. And we're going to start dropping that in and letting that spread out. Now this is the underpainting for the center and so we want it to be a really pretty purple. It's going to be the areas that are peeking out behind the darker. I added a little bit of yellow into the highlight and now I'm going to mix a much darker maroonish black color. So I've mixed my red and my blue to get a purple and then I've added yellow to deepen that and now I'm going to use a really thick concentrated mix of that and start adding the shadows around my center of my flower here. I can also dot in a few of the stamen and then soften out any areas that I need to with clean water. Now that center looks really dark and it looks a little off balance from the rest of the flower so I've just added I'm going to add another layer of detail or depth and color to those petals. We also need to add a little bit of shadow to those petals so I'm going to add a little bit of green to my magenta, which is going to dull that magenta down just a little bit. And instead of being like a really bright, intense magenta, now it will be a duller, darker magenta. And that's just going to give us a more realistic looking shadow. 
I'm going to take that shadow down over where the leaves are the petals overlap as well and this is going to get create the shadow that the petal would cast onto the other one. So while that dries I'm going to move on to the center of the white one and I'm going to repeat the same technique. This time I wet all the way around the center and then dropped in a little bit of that purplish black color so that it would bleed out onto the petals and then I'm going to add a little bit to the center area I'm working in a circle so that I can create that domed effect and leave the center lighter so that would be the highlight dot in a couple of those stamen with a thick concentration of that color and I'm gonna let that area dry now I can come in and mix up a very 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 dilute shadow color this time I'm gonna add um, I'm gonna add the cast shadows so anywhere that the petals would be bold or cupped and then anywhere that the petals would be casting shadows over each other that's what I'm going to use this for remember don't try to get too detailed don't try to overthink it too too much um, we're not going for photorealistic here <laughs> well you might and if you like that then you do that um, I I'm not going for photorealistic I just want you, well, I just want you to know it looks like a flower. I just want it to look like a flower. <laughs> so I'm going to add a little bit more of a duller gray because I know that center is, again, going to get darker. So I do need to add a little bit more darker shadows just to balance it out. And then I can come in and deepen up that center a little bit. I'm going to use this much more sparingly again that second layer is a lot lighter um, it's a lot darker but lightly more lightly applied so and that is going to finish up those flowers so these you would just die cut them and then assemble them on the card front and that is how I achieved that uh, almost vintage soft watercolor style and if this one wasn't quite your cup of tea, I will be back a little bit later with a more loose beginner level card featuring the modern peony stamp set. But I hope you enjoyed nonetheless, and I want to thank you guys for watching. Remember, you can find all the featured supplies at wplus9.com, and you can find the featured blog post that goes along with this video on our blog at stampawaywithme.blogspot.com. All the links can be found in the description box below, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!